If you want to know what I put in my client branding guidelines, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. I want to jump right into this video because I have so much to share when it comes to branding guidelines for your clients. Let's start off by explaining what a branding guideline really is. Think of a branding guideline like the dictionary and the encyclopedia for your company. So whether you are a super small business or you are an established really big business, a branding guideline is super important. The reason it's important is because it provides you the guide and the rules to how to use your logos, how to use your colors, how to use your fonts, and so on. It's like a massive packet of anything you need to know about how to show up visually. Now, the reason a branding guideline is super important is because when it comes to the visual side of your business, showing up consistently is the best way to really gain that recognition and just have your potential audience recognize who you are as a brand. If you really think about it, if you have a brand with neutral colors and you throw in pink or red or green in there without any sort of consistency to that, your audience might be really confused and our eyes just aren't really drawn to something that doesn't look like it flows all together. So the branding guideline ensures that you have the brand looking consistently throughout all the platforms and in person and just making sure that it looks exactly how the branding was meant to look. Now, the interesting thing about branding guidelines is that everybody does it differently. I actually just included a different resource for you guys on my Instagram and YouTube, but it is called brandingstyleguides.com. I'll link that down below, but this will show you how real big businesses are using their branding guidelines and what it looks like for them. But please know when watching this video that my way is not the only way to do it. It might not be how another creative does it, but this is what works for me and my clients and their businesses. Okay, so I'm gonna break down the full packet. My branding guideline packet is around 20 pages, depending on if the client really needs to know some information on like how to show up on social and things like that, then I would typically add that to the guideline. But mine is 20 pages. I don't want it too crazy long or too crazy short because I wanna be able to explain only the things they really need to know and things that maybe their team members will need to know. And that is another reason branding guidelines are important because if they do want to hand off the creative side of their business to somebody else to make content or keep up with their blog or keep up with their emails, things like that, then they'll be able to reference this branding guideline and know exactly what fonts, what colors, and everything they need to know on how to show up for that specific business. So let's jump in and break down what's in my branding guideline. So right off the bat, I have a really simple cover photo. I know lots of designers that will make this cover look beautiful and just match the client's branding that they've created. And you could totally do that, but I typically like a really simple cover just so they know like what it is that they're looking at. So we have the client's name and brand guide. And then moving on to the next page, this is when I jump into explaining the importance of a branding guideline. So just like how I explained to you guys, I have a simple short description on why they should be using this and why they should bookmark this PDF file that I'm sending and why they should keep it in a really safe place because it's a really important part of the full business. And the next page is really straightforward, but this is a table of contents. I think it's important for them to know which page to navigate if they're interested in seeing just information about their logo or the colors and stuff. Having the table of contents makes it really easy. There's also a lot of platforms that you can hyperlink within the PDF. So if you wanted to have them click on that page and be taken to it digitally, there's ways to do that through lots of different programs. I'll also link those down below. But having that table of contents just ensures that they know what they really are looking for within this full packet. Especially if you have a packet that's more than like 10 pages, then I would highly recommend making some sort of guide for them to know which page to find those specific items. The next page is all about the brand strategy and the overall direction. So this page is 
very simplified for the way I do my brand strategy and I can make a whole other video on that if you guys want. And I do have a video already on my channel, which I can link up above here. But the brand strategy is basically just going over who the target audience is, the mission statement, and the values of the company. So I like to have this all on one page. I like for them to be able to read the mission statement and also see who this mission statement is targeting. So I have a super short sentence. Mission statements in general are usually just one to two sentences long. Um, and then the target audience sentence is just a quick description on whether it's male, female, both, doesn't matter, age, whatever it is. I have a short description on that. And then I also have a bulleted point list of the values that we really want to pay attention to when thinking about the branding. Moving on to the next page, this is the mood board. The mood board is just a big collage of images and ideally the photography that the client has gone to get after receiving their branding. It's always nice to have a mood board with actual photos that the client can use. But typically this mood board is just inspiration images. So if they wanted to hand this branding guideline off to a photographer, they would be able to know the overall vibe and color palette to pay attention to. But the mood board, like I said, it's just that collage of images to not only know the inspiration, know the photography to go after, know the textures, know the overall vibe that we want to make sure that we're portraying throughout the branding. And the next item is going into the color palette. So I like to just have a page with the color palette alone and describing how these colors will make your audience feel. And then we move on to the next page with more of the details on the color codes, as well as where to use these colors. I have added this into my process because I have found that a lot of clients don't know where to use that bright color. And sometimes they might overuse one of the colors that should just be used as like an accent color. So I do like to explain to them how and where they should be using those colors as well. And then the next page is also about colors, but this is showing the example color combinations. So if I have a client that did branding and website with me, this is always fun to show them how all the colors and the vibe and the mood board really is displayed throughout the website. So typically I would go and get a screenshot of the website and add that onto this page. But this page can also be something that you create either like a simple kind of website header or showing how the color combos can be used on social media. Whatever you wanna do on this page, I would get creative with it and just show them how they can be using their branding in a real life form. And then we get into the logos. So I like to display the primary logo first with a button to go and download those logo files. So I typically will use the primary logo in the color that I feel they will be using the most often whether that's black or white, or maybe they're one of their primary colors from the color palette, but I display that alone on a page. And then I also show it in a framework to show them the spacing that should go around the logo when they're using it, because we have to put ourselves in the mind of the clients. They don't know that sometimes the text should not be right up against the logo. There should be a good amount of space around it so that the viewer can really take that artwork and the logo in and not be super overwhelmed. So I like to show them the primary logo in that framework with other color variations of it. And then I also give them a simple description on what the primary logo is all about, where it should be used, and why we have these different variations. I do the same thing for the secondary logo and the submark, so those pages look all very similar with different descriptions on the secondary logo, where to use it, and the submark logo, and where to use that. And if you're completely new to branding and you're learning the variation differences, primary logo is typically what is used on large scale when there's a lot of space that they can be putting it on. That's typically when I would use a primary logo. So sometimes that is like a store signage or sometimes that is like a profile picture photo if they really want to have the full brand name in there. And then the secondary logo is just a shorter, like smaller version of the primary logo. Doesn't always have to be shorter, but typically that is just pulling some elements from the primary logo and making it in a smaller format so that it can still get the point across of what the brand is, what the brand name is but maybe not using the element, maybe just using text and just a really simple way of displaying the brand. And then we have the submark, which is one of my favorite logo variations to design. That's typically the element alone. 
that's always my goal with logos is to make the elements so stand out so much that they don't even need any text around it. I want it to be so recognizable, like Nike. That's why I love the Submark logo. It really steps me out of my comfort zone and it's one of the most fun, in my opinion, to design. So after we display all the logos and the different descriptions of each, then I have a page that shows them all the different color variations of the logos and what that looks like on different backgrounds of the colors. So it's like that color combination page, but specifically for the logo designs. I like to show them this because I want them to know that maybe a yellow logo might not look good on a green background. And just making sure that they know the color combinations to use when they receive all of these logo design files. And then the next page is the logo designs in use. I have found that typically showing them how the logo will look like on their social media profile or maybe it's a business card or something, just showing them how that logo will look in use is super helpful for them to know exactly how to be sizing it and how to be displaying it and like I mentioned the color combos and all of that. So. I'm showing you guys some example clients, but this example client, I did create her some Instagram highlights as well. That was part of the package. So I just felt it made the most sense to show the logo design in use on a social media platform like hers. And I just simply go screenshot it and I designed that profile photo for her and those Instagram highlights. And it always helps them so much. And I love when I get to see the clients using what it is that I showed them how to use. It's super rewarding to see them actually putting the branding guideline into real life use. The next page is to show them another example of how the logo can be used. So this is typically when I will display an image of the logo in a mock-up. So it's always the best when a client is like local to me, I will typically take my camera down there and get a real life photo of what it looks like on print materials or on the sign outside. So I'll include some pictures here to show you like what that looks like if I were to take my own photos of the logo in use, but I will usually mock this up. It's a super easy way to do it. I have a whole video on mock-ups, go check that out. But basically I will just show them how the logo will look printed and that always helps them visually understand how the logo should be sized and displayed when it is on a real printed out material. And then the next page is all about the fonts. So typography is a very important part of branding and I plan to make this part of my branding guideline much more in depth, but for now, this page typically seems to work totally fine. All I do is I show them what heading font to use, what subheading font to use, and which body paragraph font to use. Um, but basically I will show them what that looks like using their fonts that I've chosen. And I also have a button for them to go and download those fonts as well, or maybe purchase the fonts, which is something I do let them know in the beginning that a lot of these fonts might require a license so i like to include that documentation for them but this page will just show them the fonts to use as well as the sizing of those fonts whether it's desktop or mobile so this helps them understand like how to use the fonts in their social media or whether it's in the website and things like that i just like for them to see the sizing and how that should look and also one of the reasons I want to expand on this in my branding guideline moving forward is because I want them to pay attention to the color contrast because for ADA compliance, it's really important to make sure the sizing of your fonts and the colors are readable for everyone, even the disabled. So super important to pay attention to that. And that is something I really want to start including in my branding guideline. And I recommend you guys do too. And the last page is typically a brand pattern. So whether I've designed a brand pattern or brand icons, I like to display this all on top of a color from their color palette or maybe a photo that they've received in their photography. But basically I will just display that pattern and I'll have a button for them to go and download those illustrations to use in their own time. So. Those are all the pages I use in my branding guideline. Like I said, it's about 20 pages, including the front and back. And the back is typically just a closing image with their logo. But I love designing the brand guideline. I will say it is time consuming because I like to make sure they have all the information on the colors, the sizings, the combinations of all of this and really how to use that in their own business. And I always deliver this branding guideline through email and a Google Drive. 
I like to let my clients know that they should download this Google Drive, all the folders in there within the next three months because at the end of the year, I typically clear out my Google Drive and start fresh. So it's always important for them to make sure they download all that and have it bookmarked for safekeeping. If you wanna learn more about logo design and how to really set up a full custom branding process, I have courses that are available at my website. I always have them linked down below. I have a branding course, a logo course, all the things, and I'm rolling out some updates with them. So if you've been interested in learning more, definitely check those out. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate it so much. If you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I'll see you in my next one.